giant rats? It's like the start of every bad adventure tale my grandfather used to tell. Welcome to the Quest Card, a Dungeon Master source for homebrew quests and encounters. What is an RPG without a giant rat encounter to set the adventure off? It's a classic. You have to run at least one. Although a bit bare bones, at level 1, giant rats are a great introduction to learning D&D. They provide core game mechanics and easy lessons to learn. You can always spice up their monster block with a bit of homebrew. So let's get started on the design and contents of this quest, beginning with the problem. You've received a new quest card. The Pickled Eye, a local tavern in Baldur's Gate, seems to be having an issue with a rat infestation. The owner is an Olga mountain singer, a mountain dwarf who ran the lively establishment before the rats set up camp. Olga is of red hair, wears a bright blue vest, and when you voice her, give her a nice, whimsical Irish accent. When the PCs come across the pickled eye, they see Olga practically begging people to come in for a drink. The PCs get the gist that people know of the infestation and refuse to enter. When the PCs approach, Olga will beg the players to come in for a flagon of ale and a hearty meal. Why don't you both come in for some tea? If your pieces are unaware of the problem, naturally the conversation will rise. If they are aware, then let's get down to business. Olga says that she saw at least a pack of rats down there. This will let the uninitiated RPG players know that a fight is coming and that they should be ready for it instead of dilly-dallying. Let Olga act strange when she talks about the rats. If you are playing with experienced players, they might make an insight check. If you're playing with new players, ask one for an insight check, because that person in particular catches something off. Wait a minute! With a difficulty class of 10 insight check, she will reveal that a previous party was hired for the same job and went down below. Four went in, three came out and ran off. She never had the chance to ask what happened. You see, this spices up the stakes. For new players, they now know that giant rats are worthy enemies and that death is a possibility. It also allows for a corpse to be looted by the players as a reward for exploring the environment and the information they gained. Which brings us to the next topic, the arena. Welcome to the arena. The rats are located within the basement of the tavern. Inside are an assortment of double stacked casks filled with alcohol, empty barrels, seating, tables, sconces, and standing candelabras. A quick perception check will reveal candelabras and sconces, while a higher one will also include puddles near the casks and barrels. This liquid will remain unidentified until further inspected. It will be alcohol. The environment is in complete darkness. Remember, that means that all creatures suffer the blinded condition unless they have dark vision or a light source or better yet true sight and blind sight fortunately and unfortunately more than half of the common races have dark vision reminder that dark vision allows darkness to be perceived as dim light and dim light as bright light consider allowing the sconces and candelabras to be lit they provide bright light in a 5 foot radius and dim light by an additional 5 feet. Your humans, halflings, and dragonborn will thank you. Dim light causes the lightly obscured effect, which means only disadvantage on perception checks that rely on sight, and a negative 5 to passive. Coming back to the puddles of alcohol, they are capable of being ignited for 2 rounds and dealing 1d8 to the creature or player once per turn if they enter the area or begin there. These puddles are immediately noticeable in bright light or when stepped upon. Make the environment interactable. I know that that's a hard one to do, but additional casts can be punctured, open and pushed and etc., spilling more alcohol. More alcohol in the form means more fire. Let Olga get mad. Maybe they burn down half the place. Now they're playing the role of firefighter and they need to find water to put it out while fighting the rats. We're after. Now that our environment is set up, let's talk about adversaries and their tactics. 
Giant rats are a great way to introduce stealth, tactics, creature abilities, and the concept of vision and light to the players. Depending on your number of players, you will have between four to eight giant rats. Consider using a few diseased giant rats for an experienced, well-organized group, or increase the amount of giant rats um, as a variable. The key highlights for the giant rats are dark vision, pack tactics, and keen senses. And they are also capable of one-shotting a wizard without a crit. Don't tell anyone. Make the rats prefer to stay in the dark, attacking any players caught in the dark. Even if those targets have dark vision, the rats aren't going to know any better. If a player or creature is caught in total darkness without dark vision, as said before, they will suffer the blinded effect. This means that attacks made by the rats against the blinded characters have advantage. Now the first rolls that you need to do for your rats should come from prior to the session happening. Make sure you have these listed down so as to not waste time. Roll for their stealth, and then once the PCs enter the tavern's basement, compare the PC's passive perceptions to that of the stealth roll. They should be receiving a negative 5 to their passive perception for dim light, and no passive check is made at all if they're in total darkness. If the PCs pass, allow them to hear or see the rats before scurrying off once more, confirming a number presence, and general direction. If the players would like to initiate combat the moment this happens, allow them to, but we're doing this for their benefit. If we allow the rats to move back first, then that allows the players to group up and set up before making their attack. If the PCs are sneaking in the darkness, you have the option to make two different checks as the rats. First, Make a perception check with advantage on keen senses. The rats should be able to smell them without sight of them. The second one you should do is their passive perception. They're not actively searching for people. They're searching for food. So allow their passive perception to be compared to the PC's stealth roll. Now, if the players are detected, allow the rats to ambush the players in a favorable spot waiting for at least one to be caught in darkness. If darkness doesn't seem like it will happen, then spring when you're ready. Note that the PCs will not be surprised because they're expecting a fight and know the giant rats are down there. You do, however, get advantage on each rat that is concealed. If the PCs go undetected by stealth, put the rats on patrol, giving them audible cues of skittering on the battle map until you say, all right, everyone, roll for initiative. Combat is very crucial to introducing players to D&D. It can be the longest part of a session, so the environment and enemies must be exciting to fight against, instead of static, disposable enemies glued to the PCs. Priority one as a rat. Hide when outnumbered. Even though these rats may be giant, a cellar is perfect for hiding behind, under, and in the casks, barrels, and tables. When a player or creature is hidden, they have advantage on attacks. Be aware though, hitting or missing, causing them to be seen once again. In order for a creature or player to hide, first they must move to a plausible spot to hide at. Then you roll a stealth check and then compare it to the highest passive perception opposed. Make sure to have the passive perception of your players noted down for quick reference before the game starts. Players can make attacks against the rats even if they hide. They just have to pick a location and attack with disadvantage, even if the rat is not there. As a rat, if you hide it successfully, retreat to the farthest plausible spot away from the groups. Remember, just because you're hiding doesn't mean you can walk out in the open. Prioritize hiding over disengaging. While rats would like to not suffer an attack of opportunity, they prefer to leave sight. This is also a great way to introduce attacks of opportunity. 
instead of teaching them a lesson, let them teach a lesson to the rats while gaining secondhand information. The next priority of a rat after hiding is attacking in a pack. This is due to pack tactics, allowing for advantage rolls when making attacks while within five feet of an ally. Try swarming a single PC with a few rats, using at least two to three. Just don't send them all to one player. They'll most likely get down without an opportunity to change their situation, or just outright kill the wizard. While putting the party in danger is necessary, only use a larger pack swarm against an efficient party, typically when combat is going too smoothly for them. Once it's all over and the rats are all killed, and someone has stabilized the wizard, there are still rewards in exploration left to behold. The PCs should be able to investigate for bloodstains or use any survival checks to search for a body. Gruesomely, the corpse has been dragged through a hole in the wall, only large enough for small sized PCs to fit through. The players should be able to make their way through in some sort of way besides the small hole. This is where you just let them try out things, breaking the wall, uh, digging themselves, and once they're, they're through that tiny hole, they will be met with a nest. The hole was made by tunneling of the rats, and so the human corpse has been mangled, folded, and is wearing a set of leather armor and wields a longsword. They're lying in this nest. They hold a satchel with a letter from a loved one, a potion of healing, and a pouch of gold containing this many gold pieces, silver pieces, and copper pieces. You just roll with the dice listed. Uh, you can feel free to switch any of those numbers around. I just enjoy randomizing loot like this. Make this person a reflection of the player characters. They are in fact an adventurer, just like them. If narrating a lighter adventure, describe the adventurer's garb and the skeleton nod to the bone. Now, if you're narrating a darker adventure, I'll leave that up to you. There should be a moral question of looting the body. Do they pull them out and bury the remains? Or do they take what they can? How do they interpret it? The nest will have a few other old bones as well, indicating that others have been brought there. There will be other passages too small for them to try to get into. There's also a broken sewer grate that leads down to the under passages of Baldur's Gate. And the skittering sounds of rats. Or maybe something worse. Close the quest off with them returning to Olga. She offers them 30 gold pieces and a round of beers on the house. They're pale in color and average at best. But now it's important to go from the encounter to the quest. The goal for this level one quest was for the players to learn core mechanics of D&D as well as provide a basic fun arena with enemies that behave like they should. This quest isn't really a quest though. It's an encounter or a task if started from seeing the tavern and Olga in front of it. If you want a journey or something to fill the old adventure checkbox, give this quest to players far from the destination. While designed for level one, the players are in search of adventure. Allow them to hear rumors while walking around Baldur's Gate or another city. Maybe they see it on the local board my player group are an adventurer's guild, and they have tamed it through the quest board. The next thing you need is to give the city some life. Use an event encounter on the way to the tavern, such as finding a coin purse on the floor in a busy intersection. If the players decide to pick it up and inspect it, there are five gold pieces inside. The woman approaches shortly after if the PCs remain idle. She asks them if they have seen a little brown purse that matches the description of what they have. See what type of character your PCs are. If they give the coin purse to her, she allows them a stay at her family's place while in town. This offers free boarding for a modest lifestyle. <laughs> you dropped this! <laughs> Random event encounters break up the traveling, long combat, and narrative. They also assist in the journey. 
Once the players are finished with both the event and the encounter, make sure to provide another hook for them until the next session. So instead of just finding the corpse and seeing the sewer entrance, maybe they heard about strange figures lurking below. Ones that hold immense power and strange artifacts. Maybe Olga has locked them down below. Give them a reason to return to the game. <laughs>